Hello YouTube, this is Bubs Comics coming at you with a quick comic haul. We're going to have uh, three Golden Age books and a modern variant to get through. So let's make me small and get to the haul. There we go. Uh, first off, I know this book's a few weeks late, but we're going to show it off anyway. Classic Comics number 26. This is uh, from 1945. And there's a chance that this is actually like the second um, pre-code horror book. So collectors in general of this uh, type of genre especially are very, um, I don't know, snobbish <laughs> when it comes to what they call a comic. And they don't like the idea of a classic illustrated type title getting um, any accolades of it being a an early golden age uh, horror book. Now, most comic fans and especially horror fans will, uh, will appreciate that this is a horror comic. Uh, the interior is almost completely this story, uh, except for like a secondary backup story that has only like two pages. So this is, this is the uh, Frankenstein story, Mary Shelley. And if you know anything about classic illustrateds and, and such, you know that they basically took, um, old uh, books or classic novels and set them in comic form. So this is completely a comic. It's not a pulp or anything like that from 1945. It predates Erie One or any of the other uh, Golden Age uh, horror books. And so it definitely, to me, qualifies as um, Golden Age horror and, and, and pre-code horror. And there's another one uh, earlier than this. I think it might be number 11 or so that also deals with horror topics and is basically a horror book. So this will put this, if you accept that uh, Classic Illustrated is a comic title, which some people just, for whatever, I they can't give me any reason except, you know, market decision, right? Well, the market has decided that this that this line of comics aren't, don't, don't count. I, I think that's a bunch of crap. I think they just don't want to acknowledge the rest of, you know, the classic illustrated line as being having any kind of value. So it's better to just devalue them all. Uh, but honestly, this predates the others and, uh, and it's a kick ass. It's got murder, blood and, and monsters. Uh, it's, it's horror for sure. So there you go. Classics, classic comics. There's lots of reprints of this. So if you if you see this book, be careful. Uh, I've recently been made aware from another member of the community, the YouTube community, that there is another first print or what we can't be sure which one comes sooner because they're both 1945s and that's all that's listed. But uh, but this one for sure, if you see that 10 cent inside the orange circle and the classic comics logo and the blue background, that is um, that is a first print. And inside it will say 1945. Classic comics 26, 1945. Uh, next, we got Dick Tracy. This is a popped wheat giveaway. If you're a Dick Tracy fan, you don't have this book, go out and get this book. It's Golden Age Dick Tracy. Uh, it's reprints of um, classic comic strips, and it is uh, it was a giveaway by popped wheat, so possibly a mail away. So you want to go ahead and get this book. This is this reminds me of the Captain Inipak. Uh, you know, Ovaltine books, which basically meant that there are tons of file copies of this book out there. So you can get a pristine, clean, good looking copy of this book for not very much money. So, so go out and get one. If you're a big Dick Tracy fan, that's from 1947. So good stuff. Keeping it rolling. We're up to 1950. Now we've got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a star presentation. I think it's number 10, uh, and this is from, uh, let's see, 19, yeah, 1950. And this is Wallywood art. And this is all the way back, uh, full Wallywood from cover to cover, Wallywood art. It kind of reminds me of the Two-Face cover that Neil Adams did when they were redoing um, the Two-Face uh, origin. But it looks very cool. I really like it. Um, if you're a Wallywood fan, I think you need this book in your collection. Good luck finding it. It's not that they're never available, but the price can can range wildly. And it's a pretty famous cover as far as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde goes. So if you're a fan of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you've probably seen this cover before in reprints, in other versions. Like sometimes they'll use it as a slip cover for the actual novel. So, um, so Wallywood doing some great work in the interiors on this fantastic wood art. So if you're a Wallywood fan or just a classic horror fan, that's a good book for your collection. 
Last up, switching gears, uh, yeah, 100%, we have a uh, modern variant, if you will. And this is Incredible Hulk 377, uh, third print uh, variant. So, you know, what is this to me? Well, you know, I do like to collect keys, and this is a book you just don't see come up too often aff affordably. Uh, I won an auction, so here it is. Uh, Incredible Hulk 377 and uh, my only advice to people when they're picking up these more um, you know if it's a brand new variant then the people that are listing those books are very clear about what they are you know this is a third print Perillo or whatever you know the an Alex Ross variant they'll tell you exactly what the variant is because they know what the variant is because they're modern collectors or modern flippers or modern sellers but when you have an older variant that's more of a, a natural variant, you're you're better off to um, not get too deep into the particulars of your listing. So go ahead and do a search for Hulk 377. I didn't even put Incredible. Just put Hulk 377 and see what pops up. And yes, you'll have to dig through a ton of first prints to find all the third prints available. But they'll be there and some of them won't say third print because if you're an older comic collector or you weren't really aware that this book had gained a lot of value in recent years or it wasn't anything that mattered to you and you or you just bought a box of, let's, let's say you're someone who just got a box of comics at a at a um, at an antique sale and it came with a bunch of other junk or an estate sale and you're just looking to get rid of it, the chances are that those people researching this book are not looking for third print. They're just going to put in Hulk 377, see what the last one sold. They may not even notice that it had a different color and, and a different price because this is, of course, $1.75 and the first print's a dollar. So people may not even notice that and they'll just put it for sale as Hulk. And they may not even notice that incredible or the new incredible. I just put it for sale, Hulk 377, and you got to dig and find it. So that's my advice when you're picking up these older books, especially that are variants or that there's something different about them. You know, this is this is the way to do it. Just put it in and do the work because you're going to have to dig through a lot of listings that you don't care about to find the hidden gems that you do. And there'll still be other people bidding against you, but it won't be as many as there would be if you just went out and said, I'm looking for the Incredible Hulk 377 third print. If you put that in your search, you're not going to get as many uh, when you're going to get a lot more people bidding against you. So that anyway, that's my little tip. Uh, hope, hope you find that useful. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Bub's Comics. We will leave you with what I think is the gem of the haul. I am so pleased to have this. It is killer. Uh, it's one of those books you don't know it exists, and then once you find out it exists, you have to have it. At least I do. So um, hope you appreciate that. We'll catch you next time on Buffs Comics. Remember to read a comic, and don't apologize for the glare. Bye-bye.